speak through me, grant me utterance this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for this glorious hour, this moment. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. I'm not hearing you, amen. I say, in Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. That is better. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. This morning, I want to encourage you with the that says, blessings of dedication. Let's say it together. Blessings of dedication. Let's shout it louder. Blessings of dedication. As you dedicate yourself, your life to the service, God Almighty will bless you, my name, Jesus' name. Amen. First Samuel chapter 7, verse 3. First Samuel chapter 7, verse 3. Malakapala da Zegedo. First Samuel chapter 7, verse 3. Samuel said to the people of Israel, and Samuel spake unto the house of Israel, saying, If ye do return unto Jehovah with all your heart, I want you to note this, this phrase, note this phrase, with all your heart, then, note this one again, they put away the foreign gods, the Ashtarot, Continue. Give me verse 4. Verse 4. And you're going to see the result. Then the children of Israel put away, did put away the valley, the ash torrent, and start Jehovah only. Verse 5. And Samuel said, Gather all the Israel to this man. And I will pray for you unto Jehovah. Watch this. He said, gather yourself together after they have been able to obey this. After they have been able to put away all their foreign gods. After they have been able to say to themselves, I will serve God with all my heart. They said to themselves, he said, if you they put away from all that we are doing and put their hearts, put their hearts, all their hearts with God. God tried of foreign gods, the images of the goddess of Ashtoreth. And they, as they did this, as they did this, someone said, now you can come, let me pray for you. Now you can come, let me pray for you. Praise the Lord. Now you can come, let me pray for you. If they had not done this, somebody wouldn't have said, we are going to pray for you. Now let me give you a background, what happened to the people of Israel. Listen, in the first, in the first place, the people of Israel, the covenant post was captured by the Philistines. The covenant post that covenant boss was a symbol of God's presence. Listen, that covenant boss that was captured by the people of Israel, you know, each time, before this time, anywhere they want to go to war, they carry that covenant boss in a cart, driven by a horse or a donkey. So in the battle they had with the Philistines, because they went without the presence of God, that covenant post was captured by the Philistines. We know the story. And that covenant post that was captured by the Philistines, we are in the, in the, in the, in the Philistines, they were there. The covenant post was in that in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in their country. The covenant post began to give problems. The presence of God began to give problems. Eventually, they were asked to return the covenant post. So this, is in, this was in, in chapter 6. In chapter 7, when the covenant was came back to the people of Israel, when he came back to the land of Israel, they began to ask questions. What happened? Why, why were we... Why did they have to defeat us? With all we had. What happened? Then, Samuel, the prophet, as at that time, told them 
I want to read one translation. It says, Samuel said to the people of Israel, if you are going to turn to the Lord with all your heart, you must get rid of all the foreign gods, the images of the goddess of Ash, Ashtaroth. Dedicate yourselves completely to the Lord and worship only Him, and He will rescue you from the power of the Philistine. So this topic came out of this verse. Dedicate yourself. Today we are talking about the blessings of dedication. Say after me, the blessings of dedication. The blessings of dedication. Now, he said, dedicate yourself. What does it mean? What does it mean to dedicate yourself to God? It simply means that your life will start and end with God. The center of your life will be God. The center of your life, the center of your family, the center of your work, the center of your commitments will be what? Will be with God. He said, dedicate yourself. Start of serving, I mean, worship God afresh. So that the loss you suffered before, the defeat from the Philistines will never happen again. So that they, 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 they will be rescued from the hands of the Philistines. Philistines were a very big problem to the people of Israel. They were a symbol of oppression. Philistines were oppressing the people of Israel like no man business. Israel could not drink water and keep the cup down. They were a problem. I mean, they were a big problem to the people of Israel. Now, God is saying here to, so, I mean, God said through Samuel, I understand what you're going through. Like I can speak to somebody here. God understands what you are going through, but you know the only way to be rescued from the Philistine. You know, Philistine could be any problem you are going through in your life. The way that God will, re will rescue you from the hand of the Philistine, the hand of your enemies, is to dedicate yourself to God. What does it mean to dedicate yourself to God? Like I said, dedicate yourself to God means making sure that God is the center of your life. Shout hallelujah. Make, make, making sure that God is your, is, is your signature. God is your signature. God is the center of your life. There is nothing you are going to do without God. God is whom you look onto. God is whom you seek. I mean, you seek a, you know, a solution from. Now, if you read Psalm 91, give me Psalm 91. Let me show you an example of dedication. And it begins, we may we not read all, but this is the scripture that captures what it means to be dedicated. What's, what it means to be dedicated. Psalm 91 from verse 1. Now, so when you dedicate your life to God, God will deliver you from all the Philistines in your life. Shout hallelujah. So he, he said, look at this. He, he that dwelleth. This scripture, verse 1, is trying to define what dedication is. I'm, I'm also doing that to you, for you now. He said, he that dwelleth in the secret, secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. This scripture talks about dedication. Dedication. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. When your life, your entire life, your entire business is under the shadow of the Almighty, he said, he that dwelleth, he that is dedicated to God. He that is dedicated to God. All that God has, all that God has, all that God will give. He said, he that dwelleth, he that is close to God, he that understands the dynamics, how God works, he that is very close to God. He said, that one, he said, shall abide under the shadow. You shall be under his shadow. No evil shall, no evil shall overwhelm your life. No evil shall cover your life. That is the truth about God's word. Once you abide in the scriptures on most high, then the shadow of the Almighty will cover you. Now God is able to recover you from all the shackles of failure, shackles of sickness, shackles of disease. The only cure for, for, for deliverance, the only cure for troubles in life is to rededicate your life. See, there is no, it's not a rocket science. It's not something that can just happen. It's something that has to be intentional. So what are you mean? Your dedication must be what? Intentional. You must make up your mind. 
I'm here this morning to encourage you to make up your mind. Your decision to come was what? Intentional. Say intentional. Yes, you must make up your mind. Now, someone came back to them and, and told them, See, if you do this, if you do this, if you do what? He says, You should turn away from what? From your old ways of serving God. Less severe attitude. You should turn it with all your heart. And again, he said, You should remove all the foreign gods, all the images, everything. And the Bible said, The people of Israel concurred. They did it. They agreed. And once they finished doing it, what happened? Somebody said, Now, nah, God, let me pray for you. He prayed for them at Mizpah. When he prayed for them, if you go down fast, let me let me read another scripture. He said, First Samuel. We are going to come back to Psalm 91. He said, First Samuel chapter. First Samuel chapter 7, verse 10. We are going to see what happened. When they agreed, when they turned away from their wicked ways, when they stopped serving all those goddesses, they come from different countries. Now, see what happened in verse 10. God turned down from, well, from heavens and scattered their enemies. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It's a Bible says, God turned down, verse 10. And as someone was offering up the blood offering, the Philistines drew near to the battle against Israel. They drove a thunder with a great thunder. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. What happened? Jehovah thunder with the word, a great thunder. On that day upon the Philistines and discomfited them and they were spitting down before Israel. If you want your enemies to be defeated, go back to the dedication. If you want the Philistines in your life, Philistines could be poverty, could be promise and fail, could be sicknesses, could be one thing or the other. See, if you want them to be defeated, watch this scripture. If you want the Lord to turn down from the heavens and turn down against all the enemies of your life, then you need to rededicate your life to God. Rededicate your life to God. Turn away from anything, anything like, you know, images, anything that is not of God, anything that is not representing God. You are able to take it away and take them out from your life. Then God shall turn down. This was not a rocket science. They, they had to be intentional. They began to remove the images. They began to do all that someone commanded them. It doesn't, this it doesn't happen. It doesn't just happen just because you are in the church. It happens because you must make it to be intentional in your life. That you are ready to do this part. That you are willing to do this and do that. Put two and two together. Look at like what happened. It's the way someone was offering up the bond offering. The Philistines drew nearer to the battle. I don't care how they are coming close. I don't care, I don't care how the enemies are very close to you. I don't care even the enemies in your house now. Even the enemies in your in your finance. Even the enemies in, in wherever they are. I don't care where they are. I don't care how close the enemies is. But all you need to do, even when the Philistines were drawing near, it was like, what do we do? Someone was busy offering, I mean, even we were offering Bond offering to God. And what happened? They were drawing near. Now, child, you don't understand. Your enemy doesn't know that the next minute they are going to receive a thunder. That God should return thunder from heavens. We thunder over them in the name of Jesus Christ. Your enemy will be coming, coming, planning, rejuvenating. Let me get him, I'll get him down. I'll get her down. Without knowing that everything is about to change. I prophesy to somebody, your life is about to change. Amen. I say your life is about to change. Amen. I say this morning, your situation is about to change. Change. In the name of Jesus Christ, all has become history. Why dedication? Because God created you for Himself. Praise the Lord. Why must you dedicate your life to God? Because you were created for God. God created you for Himself. See, God did not create you for Nigeria. Yes, he created you for Nigeria, but the truth is that God created you for himself first. Before making you who you are. God created you for himself, to be used by himself. That's what God did. Now, whatever you're doing now, is second. That's why you want to dedicate your life to God. That's why you want to dedicate your life to God. God should be the center of your life. I don't know your reasons why you are not making God center of your life. I don't know why you are still pushing God aside. He told them clearly. Look at them. This was a life story that happened. Real story. They were facing challenges. 
Philistines is took away the very center, the very presence of God from their lives. Their lives are empty. God said, it's easy. And I want to say to somebody, victory over Satan and his cohorts is very easy. What did I say? It's what? It's very easy. Why is it easy? It's just for you to do one thing or the other, two things, or just one thing. What do you have to do? Rededicate your life to God. What does it mean to rededicate your life to God? Take away, take away some things that are hampering your life. Take away some things that you know they are not godly. Take away some things that you know, you know, you know them. And if God leads you, they took away, they think the miracle was immediate. It didn't take long. The same Philistines that has been mesmerizing them, God defeated. Because the people were so, they, they were so, I mean, they were so emboldened, they were so, I mean, they were so bold that they were coming. They thought Israel of yesterday, they never knew that Israel that had been defeating has changed. Praise the Lord. You know, many people don't understand after this service that you are not the, not the person they used to know. Praise the Lord. That something has happened. And the kind of shock they will receive when they want to attack you. Why? Because you have done something that God has been asking you to do. If you want to, you know, win battles in your life, I don't care the kind of battle you're going through. Victory is assured. Victory is assured. Now, if you go to, if you read Psalm 91, give you Psalm 91, you are going to see, when you dedicate your life to God, you are going to see the blessings. Amen? What do I mean? Blessings. Protection is there. Longevity is there. Provision is there. When you dedicate your life, when you talk to yourself and say, my life, I've surrendered my life to God. I've surrendered my family to God. I, 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 you, say, you say, I will say of Jehovah, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Trust will be there. Verse 3. When you dedicate yourself to God, the issue of trust, God will trust you. God will embody you. God will give you grace. Verse 3. For he will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. You don't hear about the enemies that begin to shake because they only deliver. Amen. There's an enemy out there waiting for you, waiting to swallow you. You just laugh. You just come out by and say, Who are you? Where are they? They will run away. Why? You say, Surely I will deliver thee from the snare of flower. When you dedicate your life to God. And what does it mean? When you dedicate your life to God, you just have to make God the center of your life. It's not difficult. That is the best thing to do. That is the best life to live. When you make God the center of your life, everything becomes easy. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, if you make God the center of your life, everything around your life will come for good. Shout hallelujah. Verse 4, we may not go down. There are so many things there. Product of what? He says he shall cover thee with his feathers. Under his wings shall thou find refuge. His truth is a shield above God. Shall cover you. Cover your family. That is education. Cover your shop. You don't, you don't, you don't be that bad. You don't move from here. Let us get around and about. Disturb. Rededicate your life. Make him a center of your life. And when you make him a center of your life, there is nothing that is that does not give him glory that you 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 are allowed to get close to your life. Praise the Lord. There is nothing you are allowed. Even the words you speak, you shall not allow this to get close to your life. Because you, you are making the center of your life. Now, beloved, it is not difficult. It is easy. Winning victories over powers and principalities is very easy. If you can rededicate your life to God. If you go down, you are going to see longevity. He said, Thou shalt not be afraid. Here we go. Whatever you are afraid of will disappear because of dedication. Fear! With length of days, I will satisfy him. That is, that is long life. When you dedicate yourself to God, you will satisfy him with long life. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Who are witnesses in the house? Yes. Are there people that are ready to 
walk in these blessings. Am I hearing you? Are you here this morning? You're ready to walk in this blessing. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let your own be louder than your neighbor's eyes. You are here this morning. You want to begin to walk in this blessing. Shout big hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is the way to go. You dedicate your life to God. I said, why? Because God created you for a reason. God created you for himself first. Before you become that which you are today. Before you go for that profession you are, you have found yourself. Amen. God created you. Now let me say this. Yes, you are a doctor, you are a businesswoman. Yes, fine, good with me. Very fine. It's okay. But the truth is, before you became that thing, God created you for himself. Before you became that which you are today, before you, you, you grow up and became the man you are, the woman you are, God created you solely for himself to please him. That is dedication. To do what? To please him. That is simply what it is. When you dedicate your life to God, it simply says you are ready to please him in all areas. With your life, with your statement, with your work, in your office. You please him with your job. In your office, you are that God, you are that person God said you are. Before you walk into a place you are employed, paid by a man, first and foremost, you, are, you begin to see yourself that I'm here and working for God. Shout hallelujah. Before I work for my organ, I'm here because God sent me. I'm a sent one. Are you what i You are a sent one in that shop. And that's why you cannot be in that shop and begin to cut corners. If others are coming to make money, you are making money plus. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You are not only there to make money. You are there to make money, first and foremost, to please God and make money. But people in the world, they are in their shop to make money. They are in ministry to make money. And we are not here to make money. We are here to please God. And be a blessing to others. You have this mentality, anywhere you are, you shall excel. They can go, go, they will scatter. You know why? Because you walk, every morning you walk into that place. Every time you open the shop, you are something will say, speak to you, I'm here to please God. Your God doesn't need to begin to run after you, so you not you not dodge him or her, you not do one thing or the other, or take his money or her money. No way, because you are here to please God and also walk. That is called dedication. That is summary what dedication means. You are, here, you are here in this church to please God before you please the pastor. You are walking here every day not to please me, beloved. Take me away from that thing. Remove me very far. You are only here to please God and not man. If you please God, automatically man has already been pleased. Let's say you are pleasing God. If nobody will make a demand. I will not make demand. Because, because you are pleasing God already. You are pleasing man beyond praise God. Because if you please God, you are already pleasing man. That connected. When you are dedicated, that is a blessing of dedication. Blessing of dedication. Blessing of dedication. Anywhere you find yourself, is God first. In that marriage, is God first. In that children you are bringing up, God first. In that community, God first. In this church, God first. And once God becomes your first, everything that you have your life will be suppressed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was what happened to this people. Everything became inconsequential. The Philistines were defeated, disconfitted, they were, I mean, they were scattered because the people of Israel chose to be dedicated. Because you dedicate your life to the service of God, your life, your business. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't mean when I mean the I mean real dedication. You are sold out for God. Everywhere you are, is the announcement of God you are making. You are a carrier of God. Carry of His presence. Anywhere you are, 
they will receive God. God personified. Anywhere you are, you walk into a place, they say, Who are they looking for? They will look for you because your car will say, Look for him, look for her. Go and hand over the money to him. Because that one has decided to do what? To dedicate himself. If you are looking for a shop, where they will buy? They say there is only one shop you buy and keep your things. No story. They will call your name because you are dedicated to God. God is the center of your life. The secret to success. My secret to great truth. Defend God. That is dedication. Defend God. That is dedication. I said defend God. That is dedication. You defend God and His principles. Am I, am I speaking this morning? Yes. Is somebody hearing Yes, sir. That's how to begin. If you live here, this place, if you live here, and as you speak, as I speak, you are saying, I am going to dedicate my life to God. It will affect your boss. It will affect your life. Somebody can be anywhere and say, I know I can trust you. Go and do that job for me because your life is dedicated to God. Anybody can be anywhere and give you an assignment. I'm not blowing my trumpet, but the glory of God, I keep my hands. A friend was speaking to me yesterday. He lives at home. He was telling another person. He said, I have one person in Hong that will do the job for me. He will build the house for me. I'll do it through him. He was talking about it. Here. He said, please go and see that man. If it's good with you, then I can pay. Are you know what I'm saying? And I told he said, I told the person that you're going to do the building from up down. Because I if I enter the job, I enter with God. Because I, I have one mentality. If I mess up it, other ways will be blocked. Me will do what? We block. I'll eat my. I'll eat my cake and have it in that job. That is the truth. Dedicate your life to God. If you carry God, I enter that shop. If you carry God, I enter that business. I tell you, you can't be like the Israelites. You can't be. You be like them. You can't be like them in the first place. Shout hallelujah. As me, you are in that position now. What do you do? What do I do? Is to rededicate your life. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you rededicate your life, as you see yourself in a different light, miracles or preaching shall begin to be your mission. I hope I'm speaking to somebody at this point. Yes, sir. I hope you're, you're, you're on the same page with me. Beloved, if you can stand up well in this kingdom, stand up well, don't cut corners. Let me see God through you. That is dedication. I say it again. What dedication? See God through you. They want to see God, they will see you. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. If they want to see all that God stood for and is standing for, it is through you. They want to see humility is through you. They want to see righteousness. They want to see holiness it's through you. That is, that is called dedication. Such a work can never be a failure. Most men and women have dedicated themselves to God. None of them has ever failed. I pray for you, shall never fail. Amen. I say, I pray for you, shall never fail. Amen. I said to somebody that you're watching us online, you are ready to dedicate your life, your business, your family to God. I say, you shall never fail. Amen. I say, you shall never fail. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. can we stand up? Malaka Pali Nazade. I spoke, I spoke briefly just to reawaken your consciousness to the impact, importance of dedication. What is dedication? Making God the center of your life. Allow people to see God through you. Allow people to see God through you anywhere you go. God cannot be seen with eyes. Is it true? But once they see you, they will see God. They can talk about you. 
they can say this is God personified this is God in human flesh this is God in human flesh that girl is God in human flesh you begin to manifest all the qualities of God you're reliable you're dependable you're reliable you are dependable anytime any day that is God personified. God cannot come down bodily. No eyes can see God and they are like. Is it true? God can never come down again. You can't see God with your eyes. But you can see me as God personified. Say, yea, our God. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I say, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You're going to pray this morning. Maybe you're here. God is not the center of your life. Yes, we're in the church, I agree. There are other places you're looking on to. There are other images. There are other talismans. There are things you're looking on to. There are other people you are believing. I want you to say, say to yourself this morning, after hearing this message, I read the decade. Say after me, after hearing this message, Especially for those that want to rededicate their life. After hearing this message, I rededicate my life to God. I surrender all to Him. I follow, He leads why I follow. He leads why I follow. I am a follower. I am not a leader. Where God is. I shall remain so. My business is in charge. My very life is in charge. In my marriage, he's in charge. Everything about my life is in charge. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray this prayer over your life. I pray this prayer of dedication. You shall remain dedicated. I say you shall remain dedicated. I pray for you. That is not sure if you are going to dedicate your life. I pray for you. I take away anything around your life that has become a distraction. I take away anything from your life. I'm praying this prayer, watching us online. Anything that will stand as an obstacle to this confession of dedication, I take it away in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I declare that every image, I declare every every talisman, I declare every human being that has become that will make you not to be dedicated. I put that asunder between you. And that thing and those things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I put a sonder between you and those things and those persons in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning I decree if I be a prophet of God, anything, any habit, anything in your life that is you are making you to struggle in the area of education, I cut it off from off from your life. Amen. I cut it off from your life. Amen. I cut it off from your duration. I call up for your destiny in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. I declare you free. Amen. I declare you free. Amen. By the power of Holy Ghost, I declare you free. Amen. I declare you free. I declare you free. I declare you free. And I declare you free. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say I am dedicated. I am dedicated. Say I am dedicated to God. I am only dedicated to God. Lord to man. In Jesus' name. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If you know your name, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It is done in Jesus' name. Go and win battles over your life. Amen. Go and conquer.
Can the Philistines in your life Amen. because of this singular act? You have dedicated your life to God. From this Sunday, I declare open doors for you. I say, I declare open doors for you. Amen. Amen.